The University of Queensland Diamond Tina Institute is a world-leading biomedical research facility focused on cancer, arthritis, diabetes and bone diseases. It's based here at the Translational Research Institute in Brisbane. The Institute's researchers work closely with clinician scientists in order to discover the mechanisms behind diseases relating to cancer, immunology and genomic medicine and then to find suitable treatments. Professor Matt Brown is the Institute Director and a leader in genomic medicine. Diamond Tina Institute is one of the University of Queensland's major health and medical research institutes. We grew out of the Princess Alexandra Hospital and became an institute in 2007. At that point we had to decide what we were going to call ourselves and so we decided that to take the name of Lady Diamond Tina, who was the wife of Sir George Bowen, the first governor of Queensland. Back in the 1850s, Lady Diamond Tina came to Brisbane and established on the site of Princess Alexandra Hospital a healthcare facility which has continued until this day and hence uh, we felt that that was an appropriate name for a research institute with a very uh, medical focus. Diamond Tina Institute's major research interests lie in cancer, particularly skin cancers and blood cancers, immunology, particularly arthritis and diabetes, and more recently in genetics and genomics, that is, developing genetic technologies to help people with uh, diagnosing diseases and predicting those who are going to get disease, as well as working out what the basic causes of disease are. Diamond Tina Institute has a particular goal at developing therapies and better diagnostics to improve patient, patients' health care and well-being in the community. We've had some major successes in our time as an institute, dating back to Ian Fraser's development with Yan Zhu of the Gardasil vaccine for HPV infection, and more recently, Professor Ranjani Thomas's outstanding work with dendritic cell vaccines for rheumatoid arthritis and possibly also diabetes and other autoimmune diseases. We also have an extremely large genetics and genomics capacity, which is giving new insights into the causes of arthritis, osteoporosis, different cancers and neurological diseases. Tonight's event is really about connecting the public with new technology and innovation. And while I know many of you in the room are connected with the industry, it's important that the nights like tonight are really at a level that all of us can understand. And I guess I put my hand up twice as a lay person who has an incredible interest in this area, but has no professional expertise. And, and reasons why tonight is so important, particular, particularly in an area like genetics, is that there is so much room for misinformation. And it's an area that will affect all of us at some point as we look towards the future of medicine. And that's why tonight has been chosen as our first forum to be your health future, genes and me. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, obviously the exits are where you came in from, up at the back of the room. Uh, there are also bathrooms just outside and to the foyer of the front of the TRI uh, entrance there. We will be filming tonight and photographs will be taken, so I just would like you to be aware of that. And we've decided tonight that the best way to move forward we, would be a format that would allow you to hear from a few different experts and then open that to a panel discussion, a Q&A style panel. I'll do my very best to be Tony Jones. But the idea is that you will definitely join the conversation with us tonight. We have got some questions that have already been submitted, uh, as well as a few others that I will read anonymously from some of you that are in the room. So tonight we'll be focusing on how genomic sequencing will make some impacts on the health systems moving forwards. Advances in genomic sequencing allow health practitioners to better understand genetic causes of many common human diseases. With genomic sequencing, we now have uh, the ability to do this in a way that is more affordable than ever. And it's envisioned this will now mean that there'll be major benefits for all of us moving forward, particularly when it comes to cancer and rare and common inherited conditions. Tonight, as I mentioned to you earlier, you'll be hearing from four speakers. Aideen will first speak as a UQ Diamantina Institute researcher and genetic counsellor. She'll give us an overview of genome sequencing and examples on how it impacts patients. Then Professor Matt Brown will be able to speak to you as the director of the UQ Diamantina Institute and as a clinician scientist. His area of research is disease focused. Tonight, he'll focus on the costs, how it's currently accessed, clinical expectations, and some of the new areas that will be discussed, like the data, the legal, and the ethical implications. 
Professor Devereaux will then look at it from the law perspective. As a representative here tonight from the University of Queensland School of Law, he has a special interest in medical law. And we'll also hear tonight from the Minister, who obviously continues to support that work is being done here through the Queensland Government. 